craft is for me a combination of competence and passion. Um, you know, just doing the, 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 the work after the rule book will bring you to a certain level. If passion is involved, it'll give that extra mile that you need to really impress people, to really impress experts, I should say. As you know, we don't distinguish in the level of quality regardless uh, what, what you buy from us. You know, you can buy a Saxonia at 14,000 euro or a Grand Complication at 2 million euro. The level of quality will always be the same. The difference comes in with the years it took us to develop the watch and of course um, the amount of resources that we put into every watch. That is really the differentiator. Now, there's almost always something that is actually over the top. And, and for me the Handwerkskunst is just to illustrate over the top. If you go the last millimeter to the 100%, things you know you cannot do at a sustainable level for every watch because you on purpose create a complicated surface to then master it. You on purpose create an enamel which is very difficult to deal with. You on purpose put things on which I would say to some extent even are the opposite of what we usually are because usually we have this understatement on the dial and the opulence, if you turn it around, the Handwerkskunst is actually opulent from whatever angle you look at it. It all started with the Richard Lange Tourbillon Polymerit Handwerkskunst, where for the first time we used honey gold, also and tremblage technique on the dial. Um, and I can well recall the internal discussions we had for the reason I mentioned earlier, you know, that sort of two-phase approach which for that watch obviously didn't apply. Um, I can also recall the huge challenges we had to take proper photos of it. The problem with all these watches is they look in the flesh much better than on, on photos. So generally speaking, even the new one, that sort of translucent blue of the enamel, that will strike you if you look at it. But it is so difficult to capture it on photos. The same goes for the movement decoration, you know. If you go into the details, there is so much different to what is the look and the view of that if you have it around in your hand and you look at it. So as we, you know, went through the different levels, it was all different um, engraving techniques. Then we put um, enamel, black enamel, with the Lange One tourbillon into it. And now the 1815, that really is sort of almost a summary of all the Handwerkskunst that we had before. For that specific watch, um, and sometimes we go weird ways. Let me give you a weird way. We used the Zeitwerk Handwerkskunst and we put what we call the Glashütte escapement into it, which is made out of pure gold. Something which we've learned, well, there's a good reason why people don't do that generally, because it's so difficult to work with. So I'm glad we did it for this watch, and we did it, of course, for the grand complication, but it's something which we usually wouldn't do, because that actually is what I'm saying over the top. So you have a, a very, very contemporary looking watch, and an approach which we stopped doing about 100 years ago. That's one way. With the 1815, we did it completely different. We wanted to almost mirror a pocket watch. You know, one of these showcase pocket watches that you can find at the uh, Saloon of Science in Dresden, where you look at and you think, Jesus, that's almost too beautiful to use. Um, and of course, if, you, if that is your target, if that is what you aim for, then the 1815 family automatically comes into play because that is what we say the modern interpretation of a pocket watch, but around your wrist.